Hello everyone, my name is Cesar Torres. Today I will be presenting our work called Silocene. This is a workflow for creating inflatable silicone bladders. This is work that was done at the University of Texas at Arlington, and today I'll be presenting on behalf of my co-author, Javier Moradi. Silicone is a transformative design material. Everyday artifacts make use of its non-stick, soft, and stretchable properties. In electronics, it's commonly used to encapsulate waterproof and insulate circuits. And as a skin-safe material, silicone is widely used in wearable technologies. There is even more diversity in the type of silicones that are available, typically organized by a softness parameter known as the Shore scale. Yet it's rare to see polymer fabrication in maker spaces or in design repertoires, despite the variety of fabrication methods for creating silicone forms. And even though many of the tools and materials are relatively low cost or accessible, the process for creating these forms is incredibly time intensive and to some extent error prone. The entire process often takes hours to days with little intermediary feedback to indicate successful design choices or design trajectories. In this work, we're interested in developing a workflow that supports iteration, inspires and enables new silicone forms, helps build material literacy, and can be a reliable building block to other workflows. So we focused on a specific silicone form, the bladder which involves fusing two sheets of material together and creating an airtight structure. We typically start with a mold. If 3D printed, one can expect to spend about one to three hours designing the mold and about two hours 3D printing it. A bladder requires two separate silicone layers, each which requires a two hour cure. And once cured, these layers fuse. But without something to stop them from binding, this just becomes a fused block of silicone. To create a bladder, a separator is used to prevent the silicone from fusing in select areas. And so when an air or fluid is injected into this structure, the layer separates but holds together at seams. We'll describe the silocene process, which takes each of these uh, processes and reduces the time and complexity required to go through this process, effectively allowing us to fabricate bladders within five minutes and uh, allow them to be testable within 20. To develop this workflow, we looked at methods used by a variety of silicone forming communities. As you can see from the diagram, many techniques exist, but a framework that combines and synthesizes these insights is missing. So as part of our process, we followed a material-centric approach. We first conducted a formative evaluation, keeping diaries of the affordances, resistances, and errors of following popular silicone tutorials. From this process, we chose to further refine that the bladder process and conducted a set of morphological experiments to better understand how different design parameters affected silicone forms. At the end of this work, we fabricated over a hundred bladders and we compiled our experiences into a creative framework that manifests in a design tool, an optimized workflow, and an annotated set of exemplar artifacts. So to reduce the mold design time, we took insights from our material-centric exploration and created a procedural script that takes an annotated SVG and produces the geometries necessary for creating 3D printable molds and separators. This tool is available online. One insight was that many fabrication errors resulted from the incorrect placement of the separator. We added a registration site geometry to help anchor and position the separator and reduce the likelihood of a separator induced defect. One other design feature was the inclusion of a parting wall to indicate the height of the base layer. This helps reduce the amount of time mixing and measuring the silicone and the guesswork involved in understanding how much to fill. So here's what the mold looks like in action. As you can see, it helps anchor this PVA separator where we can then pour this uh, sealing layer for the final cure. 
With these optimized molds, we were able to fabricate over 80 different bladders, examining different morphological dimensions. To describe these behaviors, let's talk about the anatomy of a bladder. Bladders consist of air chambers that are connected to each other through internal air channels, or IACs. Air or fluid is injected into the bladder through one or more inlets. The highest level behavior we can talk about is when these bladders burst. This is a material parameter. When choosing a silicone system, the percent elongation at break indicates the flexibility of the silicone. In this case, using Ecoflex 050 allows the bladder to expand up to 9.8 times its size. Early on, we realized that two separate cure processes was actually dramatically increasing fabrication time. It was also the case that the seams of some of these bladders would separate. We found that the cure time could be reduced by curing at a higher temperature, 57 degrees Celsius in this case, and that adding the separator before the base was fully cured helped to create a better fusion between the base and the sealing layer. While in many cases uh, defects such as air bubbles or a misaligned separator would render a silicone bladder useless, we found from the DIY community uh, they can use a rapid cure silicone to patch many of these holes. Not surprising, bladders are subject to the balloon animal effect. So to minimize uh, these uh, torque forces, having a shared seam can be used for additional stability. In the bladders we've showed, we've used PVA, or polyvinyl acetate, a dissolvable 3D printable material. We found that materials that can be removed uh, work best. However, non-removable materials are useful for rapid prototyping. Now, when it comes to seams, their strength depends on how many forces are acting upon them. For inset seams, these are the most likely to disappear when inflating a bladder. However, thicker layers can make these more structurally sound. Different layer thicknesses can also be used to create actuators. The thicker layer will resist inflation, uh, creating a curling motion, and this is often used in soft robotics to create grippers or to enable locomotion. To give you a better idea of different design potentials from this workflow, we present a set of exemplars. Here we see a single chamber bladder with many inset seams. This bladder has been filled with dish soap, which has a gel-like property to remain fluid when heated or cooled to ice and hot pack temperatures. The seams allow this bladder to conform to the shape of the body. This is a bladder design that is held to the body using a Velcro strap to create a sensation similar to a blood pressure measurement cuff. We can design different geometries that use the friction of the silicone to pull and pinch the skin for haptic feedback. In this case, we encapsulated a NeoPixel LED and a CapTouch electrode and glued it to one of our silicone bladders to create a tangible illuminated button. And this button allows us to see how pressure feedback can be used to create a resistive a stompable and a playful button interaction. Lastly, we considered ways of reinforcing silicone to be more robust and potentially reconfigurable. Using a 3D printable pressure vessel, we constrained chamber geometries in this playful necklace design. Our exploration with silicone revealed that silicone does not play well with others. One significant challenge preventing its adoptability with design practices is, is its ability to inf interface with other materials. We see opportunities to develop connection mechanisms like grommets, to fuse silicone with fabric and treat it as a textile, or to look at alternative materials like leather to play with both its aesthetic, structural, and functional properties. Working with silicone and the communities that use it also revealed a large overlap in cast and molding techniques. While these techniques do not universally work for all materials, slight tweaks and adaptations could provide access to generative form building techniques. 
It remains a challenge to understand how to better support knowledge transfer within these different communities of practice. So in conclusion, we demonstrated how Salocin improves design workflows through a procedural mold generation tool and optimized mold design, that separator materials are wide and varied and can be designed to reuse the same mold, how cure schedules can be optimized to reduce fabrication time down to five minutes, and how DIY techniques can be leveraged to reinforce and reuse bladders during design iteration. We'd like to thank uh, Rung Dong Chan for introducing us to bladders, the community of practitioners within the hybrid atelier, and the feedback and critique of our anonymous reviewers. As a reminder, our design tools, uh, files, and a series of instructables have been uh, made available on our website and GitHub repo. So uh, thank you and stay safe.